Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Missing Tomb of King Henry VIII On the 28th of January 1547, one of the most notorious, brutal and bloody reigns came to an end inside the Palace of Whitehall. Henry VIII, after a long physical and mental decline, died surrounded by important church officials. Throughout his life, he had suffered with gout, smallpox and many more conditions that afflicted his health, and following a jousting accident, his personality changed completely, and he became more tyrannical. Obesity quickened the famous six-wifed king as he became large, and ate a huge amount in comparison to the amount of exercise he did. Despite the king ordering the executions of two of his wives, and many of his closest friends, such as Thomas Cromwell, Henry VIII's death across England was mourned greatly, as he was very well liked by the English population. But the plan was for him to have a tomb following his death that had initially been intended for Cardinal Wolsey, and this would have been a huge monument for the larger-than-life monarch. But this was never finished, and Henry VIII was laid to rest in a different way. But what is the story behind the missing tomb of King Henry VIII? Following his death, Henry VIII's will stated that he wished to be buried alongside his third wife, Jane Seymour, who managed to give him the legitimate male heir that he wanted in his son, King Edward VI. Edward succeeded him, but Henry had given Jane a huge and lavish funeral, and following this, she was then buried inside a vault in the centre of St George's Chapel in Windsor, in the choir. Traditionally, this is where all the knights of the Order of the Garter sit in Windsor, and under the floor there was a vault where Jane was in fact buried and interred. Henry wanted also to be placed there, but this was only supposed to be a temporary place to lay their bodies to rest. However, 500 years later, Henry VIII and Jane Seymour still are buried there, along with the infamous executed King Charles I. Their remains have never been brought back to the surface and entombed in the tomb that Henry VIII wanted for himself and his wife. After the king's death, his body was bathed and embalmed with various spices before it was encased in a lead coffin, which was the tradition for monarchs. His coffin lay in state inside the presence chamber of Whitehall, surrounded by burning tapes for a number of days before it was then moved to St George's Chapel at Windsor. The procession from London to Windsor was huge and was four miles long. A tall hearse carried the coffin pulled by horses, and on the top of the hearse was a lifelike wax effigy of the king. There was also a black satin cap there with precious stones which was covered with a crown, and the effigy was also covered in jewels. The funeral procession did rest in Sion Abbey for the night, as it took a long while to get to Windsor, but the following day it arrived at Windsor and the king's coffin was carried in St George's Chapel by 16 yeomen of the guard. This shows how heavy the coffin was, when a standard coffin is carried today by six pallbearers, and the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II, as it was lead-lined, was carried by eight. St George's Chapel had been draped in black cloth, and Henry VIII's coffin was taken into the choir. It was lowered into the vault underneath, and the Bishop of Winchester, Stephen Gardiner, did the eulogy. The King's widow and sixth wife, Catherine Parr, witnessed the funeral from a special platform that Henry VIII had built for Catherine of Aragon, his first wife, so she could witness the garter ceremonies inside of the chapel. Following the mass which was held, the trumpet sounded as the King's officers of his household broke their symbolic staves of office and threw them into the vault with the coffin, symbolising that their duty to help the King was now over. Daily masses were said for his soul, and the king allegedly wanted this done until the day the world ended, with him leaving enough money to do this. But importantly, the king inside of his will left instructions for the vault to be temporary, and that a huge and ornate tomb should be built to later reinter him in. The king's plans for this tomb were drawn up decades before he died. His parents, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, were entombed in a beautiful and ornate memorial inside of Westminster Abbey, which is covered in gold. Initially, Henry VIII and his first wife made plans for the same man who designed this tomb to sort theirs out and make it. And Henry VIII planned for his sarcophagus to be made using the white marble and black touchstone in the same manner as his father's. 
However, he wanted it to be 25% bigger, and he ended up arguing with the Italian sculptors who would make this, and plans were then ended. Henry later considered giving another Italian money to create the monument, but then this was planned. But in the 16th century, a researcher unearthed information that documented what Henry VIII's tomb would have been like. The plan said it would have been a vast monument decorated with many stones, white marble pillars, gilded bronze angels and life-size images of Henry VIII and Jane Seymour who would be entombed together. It would have had a huge statue of the king riding on horseback under an arch and also would have had 144 brass figures on it. When Henry VIII's chief minister, Cardinal Wolsey, died, he was already falling from grace. Henry VIII kept the plans for Wolsey's tomb for himself, and Wolsey was buried inside of Leicester Abbey with very little in the way of an elaborate tomb for him. Henry then kept the components of Wolsey's tomb for himself, and he adopted them and made a few tweaks. After Wolsey's death, the king gained the sarcophagus intended for Wolsey for himself. The plan was to have a life-size gilded figure of him on top. Between the pillars would have been nine feet tall bronze candlesticks. It's fair to say the tomb would have been much grander than the tomb of his parents, and it would have been the boldest and most expensive tomb and memorial possibly ever commissioned and built in England. The effigy of the tomb was cast and polished whilst the king was alive, and a number of other parts of the tomb were created. Work on it continued after his death when Edward VI's government tried to complete it, however they were short of money and could not. When Henry's son died, he did ask for the tomb to be finished, but Queen Mary I, Henry's eldest daughter, did nothing with it. Elizabeth I, his youngest daughter, did look into it, and she asked her minister, William Cecil, to see how it was going. Plans were prepared, but it was never finished, and some of the components were left inside of Westminster for a long time. The candlesticks were split up and some were even sold to Belgium, with other parts melted down to be sold for money by, by the Stuart monarchs. It remained the lost tomb of Henry VIII, but parts of it were used as the base for Lord Nelson's tomb, which today resides in St Paul's Cathedral. Still to this day, Henry VIII lies inside the choir of Windsor Castle's chapel against his wishes. Charles I, the executed monarch, was buried inside there with the Tudor king, as it was deemed quieter and less accessible to attract royalist pilgrims to. Joining the two kings and Jane Seymour was also an infant child of Queen Anne, who was buried there in a small coffin. Interestingly, the grave of Henry VIII and the vault were lost for centuries, until 1813, when it was rediscovered as they were extending the royal vault underneath the chapel's floor. Some relics of Charles I were removed for identification, but a watercolour drawing of the vault shows that Henry VIII's coffin was very badly damaged and something had happened to it in the centuries. Jane Seymour's coffin was intact, but Henry VIII's had broken in a number of ways. The trestle supporting it possibly collapsed, and it's believed that when Charles I was interred there, that Henry's coffin may have been damaged. It also could have split from pressure from inside, or that the coffin split on its way to Windsor. Today, only a simple marble slab marks the resting place of Henry VIII. It says, In a vault beneath this marble slab are deposited the remains of Jane Seymour, Queen of King Henry VIII, 1537, King Henry VIII, 1547, King Charles I, 1648, and an infant child of Queen Anne. This memorial was placed here by command of King William IV, 1837. This certainly wasn't the elaborate and colossal tomb that Henry VIII dreamed and wished for. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.